So after we remove our cases from the ultrasonic, they should look fairly clean like this. And if you recall, even though I placed the strengthener as tight as I could up against the model, you still have a little bit of acrylic covering it underneath it, which is good. So all of my uh, wrought wire clasps are encased within the acrylic base. Same thing with the upper. Free of stone. There's a little uh, bubble here, little projection here. I hope it shows on camera right there. And I think there's another one right here. You can grind these off or sometimes just pick them off if you can. Not really. So I'm going to use a very small burr to grind that away. And I'm going to use an array of burrs here. This big stone grinding wheel. A large and small egg burr. A tapered burr. And a whole bunch of little ones in various sizes that I can fit on my handpiece and get into small, smaller areas. So eventually you're going to build up an arsenal of burrs that will help you uh, trim all the little fine areas for every different scenario. But like everything else, we're going to start, start off with our largest bird. I'm going to start off with this and make my way down into something smaller and eventually utilize my handpiece as well. So I'm going to use my lathe as well as the handpiece to trim the case and rough trim it and fit it onto my duplicate models. And hopefully it'll fit. Okay. Make sure you're wearing, every time you're grinding something, make sure you're wearing eye protection, a mask, and some adequate vacuum. Of course it helps when you have a nice balanced wheel to work with. So I'm gonna start with my upper one. You can see here the little score line that we incorporated on the cast. Let's bring it closer to frame. I want to be right to that with this wheel. Don't get awfully close to that wire because you're going to grind it off. use this wheel as much as I can. The flanges that we waxed up, they're a little bit overextended. Just going to give them a general shape here. I can go in there a little bit later on and maybe use some of the tapered bird, large and small, to give it some shape. Uh, I think that's as far as I can do with this wheel, which wasn't a lot. While it's still on my lathe, I'll go to my lower and just kind of even things up here on the apron. I'm not going to go too low on this. You can leave it a little bit high and verify on the model before you do your final fitting. Again, this is a little bit overextended. And this is where it becomes a bit of a guessing game, where you finish this partial. Typically, partials are made from alternate impressions, which are overextended. So you have to find that happy...
place where things are not too long or definitely not too short and prevent stability and retention. Little free null attachment here, just gonna open it up a little bit. So this wheel is very effective, very efficient, but be careful with it, because you can overgrind things very quickly. There's a little free null attachment right in here. I'm gonna fine tune that a little bit later. Now these little projections that we had in here for the reinforcement, I can use this wheel to grind them off, but be careful as you're grinding the metal, you can see some sparks flying off, you're creating heat. So when you get close to the acrylic, just give it a little bit of a break so it cools off a little bit, otherwise you're going to burn the acrylic. So I'm just using the edge of the wheel just to kind of finish it like that. Same thing on the other side. You can be a little more aggressive up here with it. But as you get close, slow down a little bit so you don't burn the acrylic. And there's that side there too. Uh, what else I can do with this wheel? Mm, not much more, I don't think. Which means I can go into something smaller and I'm going to move into this tapered burr. And start cleaning up the case a little further. A little bit of flash here from the investment. Just blend that in. Notice my margins are nice and clean. I don't have to touch those up. And that's the, the important part of creating a, a hygienic type of finish. Because anything around the margin, I can trim and polish easily. It's that millimeter or two around the margin that you need to be very careful with your wax up. That it's nice and clean, so you don't have to go in there with a burr and scratch it even further. I'm going to taper the top of the apron here. Creating a bit of a concavity interdentally. And this will take some time to develop, trying different burrs, where they belong, where they fit inside the space to create the look and the finish and the shape that you like. This particular burr is not that new. It's fairly old, which is good because it gives me a much smoother finish, whereas a new burr is a little more coarse and it'll gouge the acrylic surface uh, much more so therefore you got to go back and smooth it out after so depending on your wax up this area to me looks a little bit thin but could have used a little more wax up in there could have built up my wax a little bit more but it's pretty close it's about two millimeters so it's within reason. Just gonna round off the peripheries that I trimmed earlier.
I also have <coughs> this cutoff disc. That I'm going to prep a little bit. I'm going to taper it a little bit. Just by creating a little V-shaped edge to it. So I can cut away into this lingual frenum right here. So it looks like that. And also this buckle frenum here too. Open that up a little bit. So it looks like that. Okay. The next little bit, I'll set this one aside. I'll just keep on working on the on the lower. I'm going to use this paper disc, sandpaper disc. These are removable. There's a little slot in here that if you pinch it together, it comes off. Or press it in just to clip it into place. You can use this on your handpiece. I like to use it on the on the lathe it just creates a nicer view for me and I can go in here and cut off the little excess acrylic that we incorporated in our wax up if you recall and now as you're cutting this part here you have to imagine the long axis of the tooth and cut, cut it parallel to the tooth. Same thing on the other side. So if this is my long axis of my sixth here, I'm gonna cut it parallel to that long axis. Don't use a diamond disc to go in here, as you might have in your burr block because the, the diamond disc will cut the clasp off. This could still damage the, cla the clasp, depending how much pressure you put on it. So you have to, still have to be careful even with this. And as I get to that point, look at it a little bit closer. I'm gonna taper this off. Just round it off a little bit with my disc. And I'll move to the other side. Do the same thing. Right up against the shoulder of the clasp where the guide plane starts. And hopefully I've cut that so it's parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Same thing on the other side, right? So I've cut that flange so it's parallel to that. Maybe a little bit more here. So we're close to eliminating some of the excess acrylic here and almost fitting this case. Let's go back to my large taper burr. forgot to trim this little flange here. So we'll go back to this. We are very close to fitting the case on the duplicate model, which is the moment of truth, so to speak, because I know if you have a good duplicate and it fits the duplicate model, you know, 99.9999% of the time, it will fit the patient 
without any issues, providing your impression was correct. Okay, now the tricky part, if everything else up to here wasn't tricky, we have to remove the undesirable undercuts below the height of contour. And you want to remove just enough to have enough relief for this to slide over the model, because it won't right now. Okay. So I'm going to use a bit of a finer tapered burr. I like this one here. Again, you got to play around with different burrs from different manufacturers. So now I have to imagine the path of insertion and create the path of insertion around this guide plane in here to be the same on this side, which is not an easy thing to do. But let's try. Do it a little bit closer to the camera, so hopefully you get a nice angle. So I'm getting very close to the top of the apron, but I'm not grinding the top of the apron. Otherwise, if I do, I'm going to create a space. I'm going to eliminate the acrylic from being inside the gingival margin, so I'm gonna trim this back a little bit, especially the interproximals here. Now, if I get in there a little bit closer, I'm gonna hit the clasp with this burr, so I'm gonna leave it and find a smaller burr to get into that tight space. Got this little guide plane here. And I'll get into something smaller. Like this one here. So I don't damage the class. right here as well. And now let's see how this case fits over the duplicate model. Before I do so, I'm just going to take a stiff bristle brush, very low RPM, around 7,000, and just clean things up a little bit on the inside, just to smooth things over. It cleans it up a little bit. Blow off some of the excess dust. And let's see how this now fits over the duplicate. It should, unless I have to remove some more undercuts. Little pressure, not a lot. If you really have to force it to go, then you have to remove some more material from the underside or wherever the undercuts are. So it feels like a little tight on this side. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of pressure, not a lot. Remove it and see if I can pick up any indication where it wedges with a stone excessively. I'm going to go back to my small tapered burr. right here. I hope you can see this on camera. Right in there. So I have to remove some more, some more of the undesirable undercut. And 
And a little bit in here, I can see a little bit against the guide plane. A little bit in here, which is very difficult to see on camera, but I can see a hint of the, the stone on the back of the acrylic base. The other thing I should mention is you want to take a surgical blade and cut off a little bit of the leftover residue here. I'll show you in a bit. Because you're not going to get all the way up here with your sand disc. So right in here, not sure if you can see it, there just with a sharp scalpel. Same thing on the other side. That little bit. Let's see how this fits now. So the only thing that's going to retain this is the retention from the clasps, nothing else. And that looks pretty nice. Okay, so there's no space now between the apron all around the partial. The clasps should be engaging as they were before. If not, maybe this one here is not because I might have stretched it out while um, taking it apart. So I'm going to just go back and bend it back in. But overall, this looks pretty good with a little bit more work to do down here for trimming here as well no gap so everything looks good so I'm gonna move now to my upper just gonna pry this out a little bit and while I'm doing this I'm gonna take one final look on the inside as well to see if there's any more abrasion of the stone there is a little bit a little more relief in here and in here without creating too much space and a little bit here and in here not much okay that looks pretty good so now we're gonna do the same thing on the upper this this one has obviously has more aprons to consider but the process is the same so let's get rid of some of the excess acrylic here. This one, as you recall, is gonna be an immediate. So it's gonna have a ridge lap, type, ridge lap finish, whereas the lateral and the central are gonna have a flange. bit of a smaller burr to get rid of those little projections on the inside of the palette so we don't forget. Should do it. And there's another one right here, which is barely noticeable. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the lathe on this one and have a much smaller grinding stone, unlike this one. And I like using this on the lathe because it creates a perfect angle for me to see where I'm gonna cut this back. Up here. Just ever so slightly. And hopefully, I've left this apron here tall enough so I'm not below the height of contour. This interior portion of the apron, I'm going to create a bit of a scallop look here.
just to create a bit of a finesse. Don't want to go in there with a big wheel because I'm probably going to over grind something. So I'm being a little more careful now and picky in terms of what I'm trying to grind. So it looks like that. Same thing on the other side. You can certainly use it on other parts. Wherever you see it, that it fits. Not gonna get too close to that wire with that stone because it will grind the wire excessively. But I just wanna get fairly close. So we have that look now. Okay, I'm gonna move back to my sand disc. <clears throat> and cut the sides of the flanges here. Now you wanna be careful here that you don't overcut and create a space. So go nice and slow. This is probably the biggest area of, a, of an aesthetic concern where this prosthetic tooth meets the natural tooth and creates that illusion that it's part of the natural anatomy. That looks pretty good. And I think I'm ready to move on the tissue bearing side once more to eliminate the undercuts here. And let's just see if I can find a burr that'll fit here. So probably around 25,000 RPM or so I'm working with now. So this is not an easy thing, trying to find the right height of contour and eliminate just enough undercut in here, undesirable undercuts in the acrylic base so we can fit it over our duplicate model. All right, in here, I gotta be really careful not to grind the mesial of that central. So he meets the other central just right. So just enough. Might have some an undercut down here. And I'm just going to reduce this flange just a little bit more and possibly just round off the inside ledge of that flange so it slides over the tissue a little bit easier. I'm going to continue on the other side, I've already finished this side. I'm going to continue on the other side, I'll do the posterior section first because that's where the most of the undercut is. Trying to hold it a little closer to the camera so you guys can see it. So be careful that the tip of your burr does not go all the way to the top. It stays a little bit short. And that's the key there. I'm not going all the way to the top. Otherwise, you're gonna create a space between the top of the apron and the tooth surface.
and I'm holding the case in such a way that I'm trying to envision now the path of insertion so every guide plane that I'm creating along here is the same angle. How can you prevent doing this? Is to actually make a duplicate, a blocked out duplicate with a surveyor and process on the blocked out duplicate that's been surveyed absolutely perfect. So you don't have to worry about eliminating the undercuts. It would have done it for you. Getting a little closer now here. Again, we don't want <coughs> the acrylic partial to dig into the free gingival margins. So we're gonna tickle those back a little bit, cut those back a little bit. All the way to the top of the apron. In here, I'm getting as close as I can with this burr. And let's just see if I can find something smaller. A very fine taper burr that I can eliminate the undercut in here without eliminating the contact area of the tooth. Let's see, I'm gonna go back on my lathe with a tapered burr. and just gently go over things. The elimination of undercuts that you saw me do there with a the handpiece, you can certainly do them on a the lathe. There's no right or wrong to it. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. So now I'm showing you another version. Probably the lathe is my favorite way of doing it because I can get a better sense of parallelism of eliminating the undercuts on the lathe versus the handpiece. Okay, I think I'm close. So I'm gonna try this on my duplicate model, see how it fits. Be careful that you don't have any, any flash of stone like this one in here. Just gonna pick that out. There's some bubbles there from the duplicate model. That looks pretty good. And let's see how this goes. The moment of truth. Still a bit of a tight squeeze through here. So you can't force this now. Minimal pressure. grind some more and I can see it just right there just find a small burr wherever I had it a little bit there a little bit here let's try it again so go in small increments and see where it takes you. Bit of a pinch right here. It's hard to see on camera, but I can see the model is being scraped a little bit. So if the model is going to scrape, so is the tissue. So we're going to eliminate that a little bit right underneath here. So that's that soft tissue undercut, obviously. Can't have that because it's gonna create discomfort for the patient. There's some more scraping of the model right here. Where I've circled it, so I need to eliminate that some more. We don't want the apron engaging the undercut. So the only thing we want 
engaging are the rot wire clasps, nothing else. It should be a nice passive fit. And the only thing retaining this partial should be the clasps. A little, little bit more of a scraping of the model on this side. And let's try that again. I can feel it, that it's trying to get down to its final resting position a little bit better, but it's not there yet. There's a bit of an interference here, as well as here, on the mesial and distal guide plane. So let's see if I can pick up, pick it up from the model, and sure enough, I can see a little bit right here, if you can see it on camera. A little bit right there and I would imagine a little bit right here yep so let's go back to those areas and create a little more relief but just enough just enough so we don't create a space So that way there's a seamless transition between the prosthetic tooth and the natural tooth. Let's see if there's any other areas that we need to trim off a little bit right in here. So take your time doing this, because I can assure you if you don't over scrape fitting onto the duplicate and it actually fits the duplicate which should be a true representation of your master cast, it will fit the patient's mouth without any issues. Bit of an overhang there, very fine piece of acrylic. Just cut that off with a scalpel. Let's go back to our duplicate model and see if we have any more success here. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to pry that out to see if we have any more abrasion of the stone on the underside of the partial. Now that I pushed it a little bit further, and of course we do, a little bit more. So slow and steady is the key here, trying to minimize all these undesirable undercuts. And give it an overall feel. Make sure that there are no projections on the underside at all. Because if there are, they're not gonna fit the duplicate model properly. And give the final and give the duplicate model a final look as well and make sure there's no interference in here anywhere. That looks okay. And that looks okay. So let's give it a final fitting here and take an overall look. So minimal pressure, that fits pretty nice. Now, looking at the case from a frontal view, it looks like the prosthetic central is hanging a little bit lower than the natural, and it is. On the bright side, my contact area is fine. Now, you could take a burr and zip this down a little bit, but I would suggest that you leave it for the final insertion. Assess it in the patient's mouth first before 
you reduce any of the tooth. It's a lot easier to reduce at a chair side than it is to add acrylic. It's a mess. You have to replace the tooth if you end up being too short. So if it looks like it, it appears a little bit long, leave it. That's a very simple adjustment chair side. Just trim it back and polish it. Okay? But everything else is fitting properly. Contact areas are there. My clasps, they appear to be adapted fairly well, with the exception of this one, which I'll have to go back and adjust. I won't do it now, I'll do it after my polishing. Because I could end up bending the clasp while I polish anyway, so why do it twice? I know I have to do it, but I won't do it now. Uh, it's sitting right up against the pallet, fairly flushed. So the only thing I gotta do now is trim the inside a little bit and taper it. Just give it an overall smooth look. Touch up a little bit on the flange here like we do for full dentures and we are ready to polish. So I'm gonna remove this. Comes out fairly easy now. I still have my duplicate model intact. Same for the upper and the lower. And let's trim this back a little bit. Margins, very little adjustment, if any at all, actually. Because I took the time to have nice clean margins with my wax up. A little more relief on the underside here on the soft tissue. As I can see, some of the model surface that's been scraped off. A little more in here and here. That looks pretty good. And I think I'm ready to move to a larger burr here. I'll go with the egg burr. Just kind of smooth things out a little bit. Use whatever burr. Try different burrs that you're going to start feeling comfortable with to achieve whatever contour you, you're trying to achieve. Whether it's a different shape burr or a different size burr. And I'm feeling it. Every time I trim something, I'm just feeling it with my finger, trying to create that uniform two to three millimeter thickness. Nicely contoured. Not much trimming. It's just more dust than anything else. If the wax up is fairly accurate, you won't have to do a lot of trimming. Just kind of taper this little posterior border here. It's probably very difficult to see on camera, but I'm just trying to make it a more of a uniform thickness here. And I'm actually going to taper it towards the, the tissue a bit. Just by rounding off the, the top edge here.
Now, before I polish the case, what I like to use is it's a like a silicone abrasive buffer here that I have at fairly low RPM on my handpiece. And low, I mean around, depending on your handpiece, around six, seven thousand RPM. And I would like to give the relatively flat surfaces just a once over with this wheel. And it really smooths them out for me. And it minimizes the amount of pumicing and polishing I have to do. A little bit over the periphery certainly in the palette, coming up to the aprons. Be careful not to touch too much on the clasps because it will wear them out. But I'm creating more of a softer, uniform finish, which is a lot easier to polish. and it'll minimize the time you spend on the polishing unit, for sure. So low RPM, six, 7,000 RPM or so. Gonna round off that little ledge there too. A little lower in here. I'm down to like 4,000 RPM now. So it's a much softer feel already. Makes it a whole lot easier to pumice this. And just a little bit on the edge here. And I'm just gonna round off, round off the margin here a little bit. Feels a little bit bulky. I should have tapered it off in my wax up, but don't want to leave too much of a step in there. Create more of a softer transition between the base and the prosthetic tooth. And a small bristle brush. Low RPM again. Five, six thousand RPM. Just clean that up a little bit. And while I got this brush on here, you can see this brush almost is almost polishing it to a certain degree. I'll do the margins just to clean those up. A little bit here. Not too much over the facial surfaces because it will wear them out, but just to luster them up a little bit, just like that. Polish a little bit on the inside. And let's fit this back on our duplicate model. See how everything looks. It's a nice tight fit. Again, this central appears to be a little bit longer than the other one. Don't trim it back uh, before you assess it in the patient's mouth. If it looks the same in the patient's mouth, then you can simply zip it back a little bit and polish it but don't do it until you assess it interorally. Go back to the lower here and finish the trimming of this. <clears throat> Get rid of some of the bulkiness here with the larger burrs and make my way down to the smaller burrs. This uh, area here where we have the reinforcement sticking out, we're actually gonna over trim that back and apply a little bit of cold cure and 
trim that. So we're gonna need to cover this completely with cold cure acrylic. But for now, I'm just gonna rough trim it. Very little trimming to do around the margins, and that's a good thing. Almost there. Uh, I'm just gonna create that same scallop look with the apron over the interiors by putting in my small stock wheel here. Just to give the case a little more finesse instead of being straight across. creating more of a, a scallop look. It always looks nicer. But I'm still above the cingulum of the teeth, which is good. back into a, a smaller tapered burr now. Clean that up a little bit. But again, I'm not trimming it from the tissue bearing side, otherwise you're gonna create a space. Make sure you trim it from the top. Clean up a little bit here. Go back to the small egg burr, this works fairly nicely in here. Trying to create that little concavity between the gingival and periphery roll, as we did with full dentures. Same thing over here. And again, I encourage you to play with different types of burrs to create the finish that you that you think you'll like to finish have. And it's going to take you a little bit of time until you get to the size and the shape of burrs of your preference to give you that same consistent finish all the time.
tapering it just a little bit more so it's a little more comfortable for the patient we still have a reinforcement in there that's going to hold everything together even though i'm flexing it and so far so good cut off a little bit of the excess here and i'm going to open up <coughs> or cut back the flange here, I should say, just a little bit more. And then taper it back just by rotating my disc. Same thing on the other side. Taper it. So I'm tapering it towards the tissue. I also have a cylinder shaped burr that looks like this. This one becomes very useful when I try to clean up the margin just right here, right up to the clasp. Sometimes you might get a little flash of acrylic, although I didn't get much with mine. This becomes very useful of cleaning up any little overhangs that you might have around the teeth. Let's see the top one here in case I have any. Doesn't appear so, but to give you an idea, we can clean the margins a little bit with this burr, like so, and right here. Good. Put this back on here. That fits on there nicely. Back onto our duplicate lower. That snaps, snaps in there nicely. Just a final look. Get a nice positive feel of the bite. Things coming together. Things are sitting on the models fairly nicely. Uh, one more thing I got to do on the lower, of course. Now I can almost pry this out with my finger nails. Not quite there yet. So there's something that's kind of making this a little too retentive. And I know it shouldn't be that retentive just by the clasp. There's got to be something in here. So a little bit of the apron in here. is creating friction retention, not clasp retention. We don't want friction retention. If you create friction intention, uh, retention, I should say, you're creating an orthodontic appliance. It's just gonna pry things out of position. Not a good thing. We're not in the business of fabricating orthodontic appliances. We're in the business of fabricating acrylic parts. So let's check that again. So once I have it seated, I should be able to pry it out just by single finger pressure. So I'm putting my index nails under the clasps and then just kind of pinching it up. And that was a whole lot different. Okay. In and out. That's what the patient's gonna do. They're just gonna pry that out with their fingertips. So that's perfect. And the last little bit, before we go to polish, actually before I go to polish, I still have to cold cure those areas over the extension of the reinforcement, which I will show you on another video. So I'm about 5,000 RPMs now with this wheel.
over the periphery a little bit. Ever so gently. And you can see the wheel is getting smaller and smaller. It wears out. It's not going to last forever. Closer to 7,000 now. That's probably a little more ideal. But it also depends on the type of brand of wheel that you're using and also the, the type of stiffness that you're using. Just ever so gently over the teeth where I trim them. And that should be pretty good. The last little bit before I mix any acrylic to touch up those spots, I usually use just a grinding wheel like this. And I'll see if I can get it a little bit better on camera. And I'll over grind this area. Careful because you're creating a lot of heat there, right? This is a fairly fine grinding stone. There are other stones that are a little more coarse than this. They're more of a blue color that you can get that create less heat as you're grinding the metal. So I over grinded the metal there, as you can see, to add a little bit of cold cure. I also noticed this little spot here, right up here, I'm not sure if you can see it. It might have been a little residue of stone that got trapped inside the, the processing, but let me just see if I can grind it out. If I can't, if I have to dig in so much, I'm gonna to touch it up and then add a little bit of cold cure there. You can't deliver cases like that. Again, be careful not to overheat the metal here. You can certainly have a little bowl of water next to you so you can quench this. Take some of the heat off. So we need to add the cold cure before we polish this because it's not going to adhere to, to a polished surface. Now that this thing is fairly roughened, we can add a little bit of there. <clears throat> Let me just go back to that spot on top of the apron and see if I can just grind it out. If not, then if I have to go in too deep to get rid of that little white spot, which looks like a little piece of stone. Just gonna add a little bit of coke here. Actually, I got away with it, so I'm okay. Wasn't that deep. And one more little bit. Just a bit of a depression down here that I wanna even out. Cause if you leave anything excessively deep, or hollowed, you're gonna have a very difficult time trying to polish it. This is, uh, this particular burr here, very shiny, that indicates it's a carbide burr. That means it'll grind metal, no problem, even though I'm using it for acrylic. Okay, so I've overground that. And on the next video, I'll show you how to fill that in. And back on our Mastercast. And that concludes the trimming of upper and lower partials. And on the next video, you can watch the polishing.